All right, another equation that we can use to solve for uh, motion in these types of problems when we're experiencing uniform acceleration is the second kinematic equation. And the derivation for this is, or where this equation comes from is somewhat complex. Uh, for, for many beginning physics students, uh, application to this is sufficient. And then eventually you'll be able to determine where it comes from. Uh, the derivation for this is on this page. We know that velocity is distance divided by time or displacement divided by time. So displacement is velocity times time. We also know that displacement, which is our final location minus our initial, is equal to the average speed times the time. If we solve or distribute the one half through and then substitute an equation in for time, ultimately in the big picture we're going to end up with our second equation for displacement. The first one which was derived and used previously. The final location depends on where you start, how far you move due to having initial velocity, and then how far you would move due to having acceleration. And if we look at this, this will give us a position function which kind of goes beyond what we need to know. That is curvy. And we know the slope of our position function is the acceleration or is the velocity and the slope would be changing as time goes on. But enough of that. It's not the main focus. It's a quadratic formula. Uh, our main focus is to apply this. If we're interested in finding uh, displacement, this equation can also be born from our velocity time graph. We know that the area under the curve with respect to the axis is going to be velocity times time and that area is displacement. So this would be displacement for an object experiencing a constant velocity, a zero acceleration because the line is flat. And if we apply another situation, the area of this one, and if you look it's a triangle, it would be one half times the base times the height one half times the base, which is time, and the height, which is velocity, will give us uh, this formula, one half times time times delta v. We also know that delta v is a times t, so when we sub it in, one half times time times delta v a t is one half a t squared. So the displacement is uh, one half a t squared in this case. Marrying the first case constant velocity with non-constant velocity, we end up with two geometric shapes, two shapes, a rectangle which has an area of vt, which is the displacement, and a triangle which has an area of one-half at squared. And if we add v, v naught t to one-half at squared, these two terms, it will give us the displacement due to moving with a constant speed plus the acceleration and then we can account for our starting position with that term. So it's the equation. If I circle this in, let's say a different color, once again, x equals our starting position plus vt plus one half at squared. And the main goal is to apply this and use it to make predictions of motion. So in this problem, uh, what we're going to do is to have an airplane starting from rest, so its initial speed is zero, and it accelerates at a rate of three for some time before leaving the ground. The question is how far did it go along the runway? Let's make another assumption. Its initial location is zero meters. And we just pick that location. That's where we start. We know that the displacement we experience will be equal to our starting location plus the displacement due to having speed to begin with. That would be V naught T plus one half a t squared. Now that quite a bit happens that makes this problem easy. First of all we start off with no, at a location of zero. So our initial location is zero. That term goes away. We also start off with an initial speed of zero. So that term goes away. So it leaves us with one term. The displacement will be equal to one half a times t squared, both of which are known, a and t. And when we solve, the displacement will be equal to one half times
times what the acceleration is, 3 meters per second squared, times what the time is, 30 seconds. Oh yeah, that's right, we're finished now, almost. 1 half times 3 times 30, that's the displacement. Oh, I forgot to do one thing. We have to always square that. That's the most common mistake. And if we looked at the units, we'd end up with meter seconds per second squared. It wouldn't work out. We can't forget to square the time, 1 half AT squared. So 30 squared will end up being 900. That's 30 times 30. Seconds squared are seconds times seconds times 3 uh, meters per second squared times 1 half. So if we do 1 half times 3 times 900, uh, and meters per second squared times second squared. Second squared will cancel, and when we reveal the answer, the displacement is 1,350 meters. So if we, if we were designing a runway that had to account for the acceleration needed, um, and it takes 30 seconds for this plane to leave the airway, we'd have to design that runway at least 1,350 meters long. You're probably going to make it longer than that, maybe even 2,000 meters just in case uh, you have planes that experience different accelerations uh, or have different flight needs. So again, we can solve for the dis displacement or how far we moved along the runway using this brand new equation.